Hi folks, what the flow is the flow toolpath? Why doesn't it seem to ever work? And how can we get it working? And what are some of the upsides? Let's dive in. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So flow is new to me and it's frustrating. We go to multi-axis. Well, why is it in multi-axis? We'll go back to that. Flow, got a bullnose end mill selected. And one of the beauties with flow and a lot of the geometry aware tool paths like those that are in the 3D and multi-axis is that you don't have to do too much. In this case, all I really need to do or should have to do is pick a surface and click OK. And not only do I not get anything, but it just doesn't tell me why. So why not? Well, let's rewind for a second. I sure as heck didn't know this, and I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you may not have either. But if you hover over flow, it reads, you ready for this? A finishing strategy that allows you to machine along the ISO parametric direction of selected surfaces. So ISO parametric direction surfaces, you're starting to lose me. And if you do more research, you'll start hearing fun terms like you should follow the G2 curvature, the tangential smooth surface, blah, blah, blah. So what they're really saying is that flow benefits from stuff that was done in the form or sculpt environment meaning it's those surfaced shapes that have really good industrial designing capabilities or properties. And it's less good at handling the stuff that us machinists normally do in the sort of parametric, chunky, blocky uh, CAD mode. And I know that's not a completely true statement. In fact, we did get flow working with some lofted shapes, but the general rule is that it's designed to work with surfaced curves. Let's take a look at two examples. I made these two shapes. I'll show you how we made them at the end of the video, but it's really easy. We got a little pillow and we've got kind of one of those like miniaturized curvy looking funny office chair things. If we head into cam, let's look at the pillow first. I did a parallel toolpath and parallel actually works pretty well here. So if you read the pop-up for parallel, it talks about it's a great finishing strategy. The lines are parallel in the X, Y plane, and it tends to be great for shallow surfaces, which kind of meets the criteria of this sort of a part. And I adjusted, in this case, the step overs to 30 thousandths of an inch simply to match the flow toolpath. The flow toolpath is different. All I had to do to get it working was click that surface once. And under passes, I put number of passes 50. So you don't control the width of the pass. You just say, how many times do I want you to try to walk across this surface back and forth? And that dictates the spacing. So these look pretty darn similar. What's the difference? Well, the difference really starts to be evident when you look at the points of the toolpath. So if I go to simulate on the parallel with show points on, take a look. It doesn't jump out at me as being horrendously bad, but you are seeing not only a staggered, but just an inconsistent uh, number of points. And what's happening behind the scenes is the cam kernel, the cam engine is taking this really beautiful curved, smooth, continuous, tangential, all those buzzwords, taking that shape and it's turning into just a boatload of triangles. And that's one reason why you're seeing an inconsistency as to kind of where it puts those points. And those points are important because each point represents effectively a new line of G-code. So it's changing how the machine moves along and cuts that shape. And when we want really smooth and really good surface finishes, we want that machine to just move as fluidly as possible. So keep that image freeze framed in your mind with those points, move over to flow. Again, toolpath looks almost the same and click simulate. And look at that. If you are OCD, you are probably smiling right now. It just looks heavenly. And the reason is that the flow toolpath is I believe quite structurally different. It's not taking that model and having to I think tessellate is the word. It's not having to convert that model into a bunch of triangles. It's actually able to use the intrinsic nature of that geometry, and you can see it much, much better interpretation, a much more wonderful toolpath. If we simulate it here, you're not going to see a lot. As we get our shop caught up and we get our fifth axis back on, actually, we could do this with the three axis, but definitely something I want to do for some Wednesday widgets where we do some more experimenting to compare and show the actual differences. But let's take a look at the chair to see if we see some other differences. So I've got a, a parallel as well. Actually works okay here, to be honest. Take a look at the points though. Same thing, it doesn't jump out at me as being really bad, but uh, you can see this is a fully curved shape. There's no real flat areas. But what's happening is it's putting a 
one line of code to cover that distance, and that's different than the distance between these two, and I'm pretty darn sure we would see that manifest itself in the finish of the part. If we look at the flow equivalent, again, toolpath doesn't look all that much different, all the difference in the world in terms of how it's able to actually break that toolpath down and, and pass over really good code to your machine controller. Where we see an even better example is if we change the direction of the cutting. So I created a second flow, let's edit it, and under passes, I can change the isometric direction to a long U to a long V. Notice that changes your arrow. You can do the same thing, accomplish the same thing by just toggling the arrow. So now I want it to machine it effectively left to right. Now parallel isn't necessarily going to do so hot here because it's not meant for steeper finishes. And if you look at the points again, you can kind of see we're getting that consistent lack of consistency rather. If we look at the flow, pretty darn nice, a lot more control. Now again, I'm very much a newcomer to this, but there isn't a lot of great flow content out there and I'm actually excited to try to use it. I think there are some benefits to it. So why is flow in multi-axis? Well, when you click on flow, it defaults to a three axis strategy. But if you edit it and you go to passes, use multi-axis. So a lot of this stuff either looks complicated or probably just unfamiliar to you, but forward tilt is gonna force that t tool to tip forward. Think of it as if you are falling forward like a trust fall. And sideways tilt means you're gonna tilt it to the side, just like if you started to keel over sideways. Anyone who's done any surfacing or work with ball and mills knows how important that is because it means we're no longer cutting with the center tip of the tool that's not so hot, but rather we're contacting on both sides of the tool path. Now, obviously you need a five axis machine to do this, but that's where this is pretty awesome. Easy, very easy five axis, simultaneous five axis tool path, which we take for granted. That's pretty freaking cool that we're getting this um, from Fusion 360. I think it has to be the ultimate version, but nevertheless, pretty cool. Uh, the simulation doesn't look so hot because it moves the tool uh, around here when in reality the tool would remain kind of perpendicular to earth on most five axis machines and your part would be moving around on its on its trunnion or platter but this is pretty gnarly and it's pretty amazing to get that sort of a tool path and that capability with such a little effort on the cam side so how do we create those funny looking organic shapes when you're in the model environment we have this purple box here that's called Create Form. And when you click on that, it actually adds a new workspace called Sculpt that wasn't previously available. And what we can now do is choose Create Box or other, any other style shape. I'll start with a box though. I'll click on a plane, drag a box out, and our shape appears. I'll click OK for now. Most of your work is going to be done by right-clicking and choosing edit form, or a significant portion at least of your work, and you're now able to manipulate the shape. The most common ways to manipulate it are by either moving the points themselves, lines, or whole faces. You can also click multiple faces at the same time by holding down the control key. I have a huge amount of respect for folks that are good at uh, T-spine modeling and sculpt environment modeling. A couple pieces of advice is the fewer the faces you have, the better. And generally, you want to try to keep the intersections here to being the maximum of four, maybe five lines. And ironically, this goes back to the first Fusion Friday we ever made, which was making a frying pan. We started the first part in a parametric CAD environment, and then we moved into the sculpt environment to help make that handle. And we went over some tips and tricks there on how to split these faces and create these holes and handle symmetry and so forth. So more to come on the sculpt environment. And I thought I'd wrap up by showing a couple of guys who are doing this right now. Dr. Phil Experience, uh, he also runs MJK Performance, awesome Harley-Davidson aftermarket parts. They run a Herco 5-axis, and they are using Fusion 360, and this is a flow toolpath. And if you want to kick it up a notch from there, 1186 card here, actually, we just had a chance to do a tour. They do some aerospace work that's generally not able to be shared. So here is the machine running a flow toolpath, sands the part. This is amazing. Fusion 360, DMG Mori, just insane, folks. Super cool. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. We'll have a link to download this Fusion 360 file if you want to play around with it on the NYC CNC website. And we will be sure to post more on both Flow and other 3D tool paths as we learn. Um, and if you're trying to learn Fusion 360, head over to the NYC CNC website. We've got a ton of onboarding videos, CAD, CAM, post-processor patch, and more. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.